Greetings and welcome to Pinball Features. Um, this is a series where I talk about a particular element of a pinball machine and just give you kind of a layperson's introductory overview of um, this particular component of a pinball machine. In this case, we're going to be talking about the coin mech, the coin door. Um, obviously, it doesn't come into play as much in the home use as it does on location, but this is a standard part of the pinball machine, the coin door and the coin mechanism here that's inside of the door. And there's your coin box. This is where when people put money in, it uh, drops into the box. So you can... Now in this particular case, this game has the slots up top. It's not into the coin door like that. So when you drop these things, there's a little ramp there and it drops the quarter like right here in the coin mech. Let's demo this. So it goes in like that. And in this case, it went to the coin eject. Now, why did it go to the coin eject instead of st straight down? And I'll explain that as I go into the different components of a coin mech and a coin door. So, this is basically a, a Gottlieb standard coin door from the 1970s in pretty nice condition. I think this might be a, a, a new replacement one here. And uh, this is on an electromechanical machine. But basically, they work the same way. On, uh, as they do on modern games, too. Um, sometimes there's a center mech. In this case, we've got a left mech and a right mech. So what you've got is you've got a coin ramp where, the, where the, the coins go in. It feeds it, and then it drops it down into one of these mechs here. The mechanism basically recognizes that a coin has been dropped and credits up the machine, right? So it's a relatively simple kind of setup. In most games that have been operated, you'll notice there's lots of stains and gook in here because when you, on the older games with the flatter glass, people would put their drinks on them and spill them and it would come down through the lockdown bar into the coin mech and it can kind of gook this stuff up. While this coin door is new, the mechanisms are a little bit old and you can see there's some, uh, some corrosion on these old mechs. So let's, let's pull a mech out of the game and take a look at it. So every game is a little bit different, but usually there's a little switch or a tab. In this case, you pull down on this, slide this out, and then it, li it lifts up a little bit and comes out. So there's, there's our mechanism right there. And this says uh, 25 cents, so this takes quarters. And this is basically, this is a pretty raggedy mechanism. These older ones were made of all metal. They were pretty solid. Now they've got these ones made by a company called Immonex that are plastic, that actually um, work quite well and don't, don't require as much maintenance as these things. Um, but they're all basically about the same. So when you want to change, say, what kind of coins you take, this is the mech that you change. They have coin mechs for tokens, they have coin mechs for quarters, for nickels, for dimes, um, and all that. But you, you normally don't, I mean, there, there's probably a way of modifying a coin mech um, to take different size tokens and coins, but usually you just buy the mech based on the denomination that you want to use. Quarters, obviously, in America, this is what people use. So let's take a look at this coin mech. Um, this is, there's a swivel part here, and you see this big square on it. That's a, that's a magnet. And the reason for that is that's part of one of the, uh, the anti-cheat devices where, because um, quarters don't really have any ferrous material in them. They're not magnetic. So if you try to put a slug or something with a high iron content through, the magnet would grab it and not let it fall. So let's take a look. Here's a, uh, this is a token. Well, actually, this is non-ferrous too. So this is going to hit one of the other mechanisms, which is going to be based on the size of the coin. And see, it falls through. Let's see, this mech is pretty pretty ragged out. There we go. So we drop a quarter. We'll see the quarter go through in a different way. See how it goes, goes that way. So the way the mech is designed is if you drop a coin in and it doesn't fit the right size, or, um, it'll drop straight down. If it, um, if it is the right coin, it sends it over to the right. See? And the way this works is there's two, e there's two ejection areas where this thing kicks out. 
There's this one on the left and this one on the right. The left one is uh, the coin return. The one on the right is uh, the credit thing. Or let me see. Maybe I got it the other way around. Let's check. Let's see. Yeah, it's, okay, it's the other way around. Even though this thing sends it to the right, it ends up going back to the left. Um, and every coin mech is a little bit different, but basically the credit counter one is this one on the left, and then the thing on the right is all the rejections that go back into the coin return. So there's, you have a couple of main functions of it. You've got this little weighted sized piece here that helps differentiate the coin, and if, if the wrong kind of coin goes through, it goes a different way. It kicks it out to this larger ramp here, which filters it over to the eject side. If you put something in here that has a high iron content, the it's going to get stuck on the magnet. It'll go in and it'll stick, and in, in which case you'll have to eject it. And there's the eject button right here. When you hit that, it pushes, it opens, partially opens up uh, the inside of the mech, pushing the coin away from the magnet so that it can drop, so it clears of it. Although I have seen certain types of coins that may be magnetized, certain like uh, some of these Canadian quarters that have so much magnetism, sometimes they'll stick in certain mechs. So um, Canadian quarter can sometimes just get stuck in the mech, and then the only way to get it out is to open it up and take it physically off of the magnet. Um, so it depends on the different kinds of coins and stuff like that. But uh, theoretically, if you stuck a thin magnet in here, you probably would also have problems if you could get it down this far enough to jam the mech. So, Basically, the coin comes out rejected or registering for the credit. So you'll see there's a little hole right here, right? And you've got to, you wonder, like, what's that, what's that little hole for? Well, that explains a feature, especially on the electromechanical games, this lockout. This is called a, a lockout relay. So you see there's a, um, there's a coil here, and when power's on, this thing is energized, and you see there's a little, little rod that moves, moves to the left, and what it does, let me, uh, let me zoom in down here and show you, if you can see, let's go back a little bit, there's a little plastic piece right here, let's see if you can see it, little plastic piece that moves in and out, see it right there, in, out, in, out, in, out. So when, the, when this thing is off, this little metal thing is sticking through this hole. So what that does is it keeps the coin from going into the accepted slot. Now, the reason for that is if the power is off in this machine and you put a coin in, you don't want to lose that coin because the machine won't recognize it as a credit. On electromechanical games, if this lockout relay isn't working, and you put a coin in, it just goes straight into the cash box. But since the machine is not on, it doesn't register the, the credit. So what this does is it makes sure if the machine is powered off, any coins that are put in will always go straight to the change return. So you can't lose some money putting a coin in when the game is not on, and otherwise, you know, that would be useless. So that's, a, that's another feature of the whole coin operation. Um, you see down here, there's also this little switch here. This is called a slam switch, slam tilt. And um, I, I had another feature where I talked about all the different kinds of tilts in the machines. And uh, there's usually one in the coin door, and it's in different spots. And then you have the eject button. See this right here, which would push down on the knob to eject. And so that's basically the... the the parts of a coin door, it's relatively simple. If you're operating a game and you've got it on location, um, one of the major things you have to do on a regular basis is take a look at the coin mechs. They tend, if you've got a really reliable game, you can still run into problems with people sticking the wrong kind of coins or some kind of gummed up quarter that's got something sticky on it. And it can get stuck anywhere along the way. And uh, I would say when I was operating games, one of the main things that ended up happening was having to come and clean out these coin mechs because sometimes they would get gunk in here or some weird coin would jam it up and the same thing in the in here you know it's and it's amazing how many people will just keep stuffing coins in even when it's jammed thinking that's going to help um, and I've pulled like you know 10 quarters out of the out of the slot here before um, what I like to do is spray a little bit of dry silicone lube in here run a bunch of coins through it and kind of that that makes it run a little bit better I think
So there you have it, coin doors and coin mechs. Um, and, uh, and you'll see there's a little hook over here. This is for usually the key to the back box that's sitting here. And um, that's basically a relatively simple little straightforward part of the machine. And uh, for more, visit pinballhelp.com. And please uh, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, YouTube slash pinballhelp. And until next time, thanks for watching.